I don't know where you just find your name tag, I guess. Gotcha. All right, folks, it's about time to start this. Are we recording? It's all recording. Okay. Yeah, about one more minute. We apologize for the inconvenience of talking. We're going to be talking that way because the camera's that way. So occasionally maybe we'll get to see who you are. But the city council took our chamber tonight. <laughs> so it is what it is. There's Mr. Moss. Huh? Hey, Mr. Moss. Ken, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing okay. You doing okay? Good deal. Why are you talking? How are you? All right. Uh, we'll now call this regularly scheduled meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission for Monday, August the 19th. It's now 7 p.m. Uh, we've got a couple of members that are going to be delayed, and we'll just have to put their names down as they come in. Miss Mitchell and uh, Josh Sandler. And I don't know who else are we missing. I think that's it. All right, first item on the agenda. And I, I must remind everybody we're being recorded. The microphone's way up there, so we need to speak up as loud as we can to hear it or to get it on the recording. Um, First item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the last meeting. Here's Mr. Pease. Come on in. Very good. Anywhere. I think you're right here. Did any of the commissioners have any uh, comments, changes, or corrections for the minutes? Yeah. Move approval. Okay. Second. It's been moved by Mr. King, seconded by... Uh, Miss Daniel, is that who spoke up down there? Miss Daniels. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, that item has been approved. The second item is a discussion is a discussion action item. I believe yes. Uh, discuss and consider an application from Colin Heffich, PE, for a final plat Stony Creek Phase Three B. Located at or about 350 Town East Boulevard, 161 acres southeast of the intersection of Town East Boulevard and Collins Road. Rashad? Yes, sir. Uh, this is the final plan application for the Stony Creek Phase 3B, uh, located at the intersection of uh, North Collins Road and Town East. Um, this received a plenary plat approval um, last year. Um, this proposed final plat is just a follow-up to that plenary plat, um, in which we will create 43 single-family lots. There will be one-acre lots. Uh, this final plat is in, in uh, accordance with the uh, amended concept plan and plenary plat that was approved prior to this. Um, with that amendment, the applicant uh, submitted uh, a proposal that is uh, going to be going to develop a number of lots less than what would be allowed typically under the requirements of Stone Creek PRO. Uh, the max number of dwelling units allowed per the PRO is 75. The proposed uh, number that they're proposing to create, create is uh, 68 uh, with track three. Uh, the density at the uh, one complete would be 0.3. One uh, maximum allowed would be 0.5, and the open space is required as 21 acres, and they will uh, meet that requirement with regard to what they're proposing to construct in the open space. Direct access will be provided from the existing Stone Creek Boulevard, um, and it will loop around and intersect columns again, so that will provide two access points for the phase. 
at Final Price Stage, the developer is responsible for uh, a contribution of $1,100 per lap for the traffic mitigation fees per the PRO. Uh, this would equate to $47,000 approximately. Um, and the ordinance also requires the developer to contribute $25,000 toward the construction of a uh, major center uh, and a parking lot. These funds uh, are required upon final price approval. Staff recommends approval, noting the flat component for the community uh, flat and the amended concept plan. Okay. This is a discussion and action item. Uh, is, does anyone wish from the uh, um, wish to discuss this? It, we're, we will not open a, a public hearing on this, but anybody who wishes to get up and speak, they can. Nope. Commission members? Hey, Rashad, can you back up the slide? Can you show me where on this slide the second the second touch point on Collins Road would be from Stony Creek Wilbur? Or can you show me on any slide? I can't really understand where, that, where it's going to touch down again. Give me a minute. It goes. Stony Creek. Little boy is going to continue, and it's kind of showing here for some reason, uh, and it's going to loop around and come out right at the drop down. If you want to come in some more to town, these okay. it kind of drops down. Um, so, a, so how far from the intersection of Collins and Town East? I couldn't give you a specific uh, distance, but if you look at the, the proposed plan here. But is it across from the existing driveway of, of the last president on Collins then? It doesn't look like it. Looking at that. Based on this proposal, it's going to come out. You see this. Um, yeah. This property here is that kind of area that floods. Right. So it's going to come out. Halfway in the area. Halfway between that area. Yeah. It's like it's going to come out right here. That was the question I had. How close is it? Far enough away from that intersection to have a crossover and have a, I guess, a uh, proper, proper intersection because you can't get too close to any intersection. You can't have two that close together to cause traffic problems. Correct, and keep in mind our town engineer has reviewed this. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand the, I guess the flow of these, these people would drive <coughs> to Stony Creek Boulevard to access the school? I would assume the majority of them would go back out to the light. Because this, this Stony Creek Boulevard, um, this portion will continue to the existing uh, Stony Creek Boulevard. Come to the intersection. Okay. But it's a light. That small area you say is for flooding? No. Yeah. That little triangle area is yeah. kind of it, water retention area. It naturally floods, um, but it's not a retention area or nothing like that. It's, it's, just, like it's just an area. It's not a retention, but a place for yeah. water naturally. I'm just speaking that to, to describe. Yeah, the, lake is, the lake is just to the west of that. Yeah, McGee Pond is right here. When it rains heavily, that will fill with water, but it's not intended to be a retention. No. That's all I have. Yeah. And so it's, a, it's a good idea to name that spoon bill because I was wondering how you were going to say, don't take the first Stony Creek, take the second Stony Creek. That was a discussion of that. That's good. The <laughs> right. So does the flooding, if there's any flooding from Dump Creek, it will not get to that. No, and keep in mind this is what playing here. So that's the, this is Collins Road. So if it was going to get over here, we'd have to overtop Collins Road, which I've never seen that happen. It's happened on the town east side where it doesn't really get head east, but I don't, I don't foresee that happening. Any other comments, questions from the commissioners? 
Entertain a motion. Motion for approval. Second. 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 Okay. Um, Mr. P, so the motion and Ms. Mitchell with the second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. On to discussion item number three. Discuss and consider an application from Colin Huffis PE for a final plat, Stony Creek Phase 4B, located at or about 7 Fenwick Drive, 77 acres north of Fenwick Drive. Assuming this is just a continuation of what we just did. Pretty much, this is just the uh, Phase 4B portion of the proposal. Uh, it's a final plat. Uh, and this is a follow up to the preliminary plat and amended council plan. Uh, I know requirements that a final plan must be in place before the construction starts, so that's what the developer is doing. Uh, the proposed final plan will create 88 single family lots, and it is in accordance with the, as I stated, the minute concept plan and preliminary plan. Um, at the end, the completion of track four, which this is the gate portion of Stone Creek, uh, this in, a, in, a, in addition with uh, phase 4C, we'll create 233 lots for the track four development. The uh, max number that's allowed is 235 for the PRO or PD. And the maximum density is 1.43. Uh, at completion, this uh, density that they're proposing will be 0.92. Uh, there were some uh, discussions with regard to access to this site where there were some exemptions given by council, I believe PNC as well, with regard to uh, the entrance on Mans, but as Mans Road now it is a, going to be a full access point. Uh, the developer will improve the portion of Mans from the easement heading east. Um, the access points to the phase will be gated, uh, so there still will be it's full access, but it still will be restricted. Uh, Council Road, of course, was extended by the school district, uh, especially this, this new extension for, for, for the uh, new intermediate school. There is a gap that was found in between the extension for the school district, the school district recently did, and the improvements for the developer as part of this phase. Um, Staff worked with the developer to figure out a way to uh, make that connection, um, and they have uh, worked out an agreement with the town council uh, developers' agreement that will waive a portion of the traffic mitigation fee that is typical eleven hundred dollars per lot, and they'll allow them to use that fee in lieu of uh, uh, for the construction costs of that connector. If that makes any sense. Okay. Um, so, with that being said, there are there any other changes? Uh, staff recommends approval. Okay. Anyone wish to speak on behalf of the applicant? If not, any questions, comments from the commission? Um, so, it's my understanding that we talked about council being extended to hands by the school district. Correct. And that school would deal with that part. We kind of approved that and, and that was good. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, I think there was some, I guess I misunderstand. They didn't, they weren't required to necessarily extend all the way to the easement, which, this easement here. Prior, prior 
So there'll be a, there's already a connection on NAS by the intermediate school. No. No, not now. No. It stops short. Stops. There's right. definitely a connection. I drove it today. There's a, there's a, oh, that's the connection that the school has. So there's one connection by the intermediate school. That goes to the back of the intermediate school. Yeah, it goes around the rear. But it doesn't connect. And the intent for NAS was piece is it's supposed to go up and eventually tie in right here. Mm -hmm. What you're seeing now is it goes up, stops, and there's a left-hand turn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So there's a gap for the future real intention of the right way of Hamilton Road where it ties in. Right, no, I, I understand that. So I'm saying, will, will the, the current connection that goes to the intermediate school now, that connects there, will that be eventually done away with? No, they're going to keep that, that asphalt connection right there. Okay, so there'll be two connections. Right. Where you see this, this no man's land, that'll be abandoned and removed once this <coughs> connection, full connection. Right, so that, that's right, that drives me out of final point. So you won't be able to drive down Nance Road. You'll have to make a left on the Hounsel. Well, it'll be a natural transition. So it, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. You can't yeah. drive all the way down Nance Road to get to Collins. Should no. be able to. Yeah. Yeah. Was the last time. From, I thought you couldn't. You I thought you had to get on Hounsel. I and take Hounsel. We talked about last time. We got round and round. And Hounsel and Nance will be one group. They'll have, they would have to get the naming for changed or revised, but I think people are getting confused that the, the right of way for Hounsel and Nance will be essentially well, tied be a, together. There'll be a part of it that won't be, you cannot drive on. A part of the existing Nance. So you cannot drive from Fenwick Drive down Nance and, and go out Collins. You can, it just discourages that with the Canadian. Perhaps it can Because <laughs> you, you said there's going to be a remnant road, right? Hmm. You remember this conversation we had last time? Yeah. So there's a remnant here. That yeah. Will be abandoned. Right. right. So once it's abandoned, saying. you won't be able to drive on it. No, that's we're saying you can't go all the way down, straight no, down. Okay, no, that's what we were trying the people, to say. The people, that's what we talked about this the families in Duxbury Court, and they're all upset about that. And right. See, but you're, I was getting confused because saying there won't be a way to get to Collins. Yeah. Will be a way to but it'll be, it'll be Hounsel. Right. Okay, right. perfect. Okay. Yeah, you won't have to make any turns. It'll just be a... Right, right, right. Perfect. That's fine. Right. right. I just feel like we, we talked a lot about it with the, yeah. the, the, the families in Duxbury Court. We should at least honor that. We'll Agreed. What we talked about. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you, Shots. Sorry about that. It's being done that way to mitigate the traffic around the intermediate school. And then our later connection right now, Stony Creek phases, the phases to the east of the school to tie back in to come back in. Yes, yeah. That's right. To the right. right. Because there was always discussion about Nance being abandoned and Household would be the road would connect into it. But with the intermediate school, I got changed. So that's what we're doing now. I know some of those homeowners were concerned about the traffic on that road. And I can understand that. But there was always a plan to have a council go in to, uh, to the east and connect into the future Stony Creek. Because everything north of Robin Ridge is going to come to all those developments north proposed potentially. We'll go north and connect in the slash house. Yes, yeah. Got it. Okay. Thanks, I'm good. Okay. Entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Ms. Mitchell, do we have a second? Ms. Daniels? Oh, that's not supposed to be ringing. I've got it turned off. All those in favor? Passes unanimously. Discussion item number four. Discuss and consider an application from Colin Heffitz PE for a final Platte Stony Creek Phase 4C located at or about 400 Nance Road, 81 acres northeast of Nance Road. A continuation of the first two items. Yes, I know this is a continuation of the first two items. Uh, this is Phase 4C uh, located toward the uh, farthest eastern portion of the Nance Road. Uh, this proposed final plan will create 76 single family lots. Uh, as noted, this is uh, in accordance with the preliminary plan and amended concept plan that was previously approved. Uh, I'll note the details. Uh, 
proposed uh, number of the normal use is 233 uh, when you combine it with the existing track for uh, the phase 4B, but specifically this flat with 376 miles. Uh, proposed density is 0.92, and the proposed open space is 43.46, but your <coughs> has already been developed with the phase 4A. Uh, something I did not know, uh, previous approvals uh, uh, for phase 3 and phase 4, um, the applicant plans to go ahead and grade uh, pretty much all phases. Uh, but they will only move forward with the full construction of phase 4B at this time. Um, and as I noted with the, uh, the way that was given by town council with regard to the development agreement, that was also, uh, phase 4B was, was included with that, that $1,100 waiver for line. Okay. Uh, again, anyone from the applicant wish to discuss or? Present anything? I'm assuming not anything from the commissioners. Um, I believe item number two also included a uh, construction of a nature center. Yeah, I mentioned that. You know, mm -hmm. at, at the end of that, um, let me play a minute concept plan. We understood that it really wasn't requiring the developer to construct it, they were to contribute to a nature center. But there was, there was no, no notation or anything in the PRO saying where this nature center was to be located. So they'll just, that'll be put in the Stony Creek Development Fund, whatever it is, choose to name it, and we'll deal with that later. And um, in each proposal, this one particular one says the plot will create 76 single family lots, right? And when we add Item two and three together, I get a total of 207 watts we're creating today. Yeah, that, that the phase, I think one of those phases was a typo. Mm -hmm. uh, but oh, the, the total, if you just look, I have the correct number, it's post, post track four, it's uh, 283. Any other questions or comments? Do I hear a motion? I make a motion to approve the final plan of Stony Creek Forcing, uh, located at or about 400 lands. Second. Okay. It's been first and set our motion and seconded. All those in approval? Unanimous. All right. On to item number five. Yes, uh, Commissioners, this is uh, replat. Applicant wish to approach and provide any more information? Anyone? Third year, but okay. It's still me, unless you have a question for her. Uh, She's the owner. Commission? Anybody? Okay. We uh, now <coughs> will open the public hearing to discuss this. If anybody wishes to approach and 
and uh, give any info or give any comments one way or the other. Please come up. Just state your name and address for the record. My name is Alice Travis, 396 Dawson Road. I'm the owner, so if you may have any questions on it, I'm more than happy to answer for you all. Okay. I think as many times as it's been replatted, we're pretty good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody? Okay. Thank you. We'll now close the public hearing. Anything else from the commission? Entertain a motion. Recommend approval. Okay. Second. Okay. <laughs> First, with uh, motion by Mr. Moss, approved or a second by Mr. Pease. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Moving right along, Diane. Item number six. Yes. Um, this is a request for a specific use designation uh, for property along Highway 80. Circle leasing owns it, and the tenant is an applicant for more um, This is This request is for outdoor uh, contractors' shop storage yards. Um, pretty much all around 80, you can find these types of uses contractor shops, um, different ones about outside storage. For this one in particular, um, requesting outdoor storage for the rear portion, uh, completely encompassed by a masonry fence. Uh, wall rather eight tall. Sorry. Uh, letters were sent out to the budding property owners. Um, I spoke with one and no problems with the, with the request from the applicant. From Warren C and is a full service contractor which serves the electric and telecommunication gas industries. Uh, business operations can take place off-site and parking on six days and we work on site in the office. That's what their current um, certificate of occupancy is for office use. Uh, the applicant intends to pay the storage charge with aggregate base, which trucks and equipment are going to be stored. Other improvements to the site are required as it hasn't been made yet. Here's a proposed site plan showing where they intend to park their vehicles and trailers. Applicant wish to add anything to staff's comments? The president in the rear What is going on with my phone? <laughs> I, it's off. Yeah, it's off. <laughs> and it's still ringing. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Do you have an override for some? I No. It's just a dance. He's uh, the president, but okay. unless you have questions, then they don't. Okay. All right, then we'll open uh, the public hearing. If anybody wish to uh, speak either for or against this applicant's proposal. If not, we'll close the public hearing. Any questions, comments from the staff? Personally, think it's a done deal. Eric, it seems like they've, you've gone a lot, got a lot of detail. You only ask questions of the applicant. It seems like you've, you've got to kind of hit those high points. Yes. Uh, well, what an SUV goes into different different criteria to determine whether it's appropriate for the location. Sure. Um, so that be typically asked, is this the type of use that's going to be... Did you get any idea of the, the, the... It said things will vary sometimes during normal booking hours. Did you get an idea of how many trucks and... Um, how they're, they're, they're saying that um, only a few... Let's see. They only have room for a few trucks and trailers. and um, They said about every fifth week, they're going to have some kind of operations that run a little bit outside of the typical 8 to 5. Um, but uh, that's all the information I have on that. I don't imagine it'll be too intensive or disruptive to the neighboring community. Yeah. And that wall is already giant already. Yeah. It's, 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 it's cool. So they don't, they don't have anything with like a crane or that, that goes higher than the, that can be visible from the right of way. Okay. Really good. That's uh, from much beyond that. Okay. That's all I have. All right. Entertain a motion. Motion for approval. Second. Okay. 
Motion by Mr. Pease, second by Mr. Okafer. All those in favor? Unanimous. That was not me. <laughs> All right. On to item number seven. Uh, it's. Uh, I guess we'll have a presentation about this new house bill that is really putting a kink in the works. got a lot this week because of these legislative updates. So I have copies. Um, if any of you would like paper copy, you want to take notes, anybody? Sure. I'll just start. You, you just pass them down. Take one if you would like. All right. So I, is this the first meeting that our firm has attended? I think so. Yeah, I think so too. Well, thank you for having us. Um, we have... And we keep adding so many, so we have about 15 attorneys, so you'll see different ones from time to time. Um, so I just wanted to let you all know that in, in case there's another meeting in your life. Um, Whoever is working on a particular matter will be the one uh, at the meeting. So I'm going to give you all of the legislative updates. Um, a lot of them do pertain to planning and zoning. It's not a real long presentation, so I'm not going to keep you here on it. Well, if I can... It's changing. I was changing. It is changing on the screen. Try it again. No, There it goes. All right. So this past legislative session that was conducted of over the summer uh, introduced several bills listed at the bottom that pertain to cities and because like somebody said previously it's caused a lot of disruption um, most of these bills become effective September 1 one has already become effective uh, in May it's the annexation bill which we'll talk about um, and the reason why we're bringing these before you and advising you of these is because many of the bills require uh, notice and publication before you can address these matters. So we're taking care of that tonight. Um, we have, well, I'm not going to count them, but several bills listed below, that, and we'll go through each of them, so I'll uh, save them for that particular bill or discussion. So the first one, this is... One of the bills that has everyone in a um, tussle, it regulates building products uh, in a sense that almost anything goes now. So the, any product or material that was allowable within the last three cycles of national code, either the International Res Residential Code or the International Building Code, uh, those products are allowed, even if the city has not adopted those international codes, we still have to follow them. Uh, it applies to residential and commercial buildings uh, in, in all stages, so new construction and remodels. So if you have a, a current house in, the, in town, they can slap up some metal siding or uh, put a shipping container in their yard We'll get to that. Some lovely pictures. Um, and you can. It's awful. And y'all, if you have questions, feel free to let me know. This can be more of a, a conversation. Um, and if at any time we get to something that I, I feel that we should discuss in an executive session, we can do that. So, uh, but the purpose of tonight, and I should have started with this, but the purpose of tonight is to let y'all know the changes and. Uh, you'll, you have an ordinance that will put these changes, it's a basically a placeholder until the city can 
get to revising all the different ordinances. Many of our, our clients are having to do extensive rewrites. So this is just, the ordinances now just are a placeholder. Do they have those ordinances or are they only going before council? We have an ordinance okay. uh, on the agenda tonight uh, right. for right. 2439, um, 3167. 3167. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so, so they're going to be approved by our council, is that? It's got to be approved is. by us, and then there's a reading by the council, two, two readings at the end of this month. 26 and 27. 26 and 27. Okay. One of them is a special session. Yes, and unfortunately, uh, the question was posed in other, by other clients. Well, what do we do if we don't pass these amendments? Well, or these ordinances, excuse me. The law has changed, so if we don't, don't pass it, you still have to abide by the law. So it's it's very disruptive, but we do, and because the laws went, are going into place before many have time to review and amend, um, that's why we've got these placeholders. So I have, <clears throat> have one question, I guess. Yes, Has there been any talk from anyone anywhere about fighting this through the courts? Um, so... Not through the courts, to my knowledge, and only because uh, it's more efficient to fight this through the legislature, because we have not, there's nothing on the face of the bill that makes it unconstitutional that would warrant a successful court battle. Um, so many, there's a, a collective group of, of entities that are fighting on the basis that a lot of this, the reps that looked at the that passed, voted for the bill, didn't even look at it or read it. Um, That's obvious. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> well, we so the joke around the firm is that we're gonna we're gonna buy some houses yeah. next, next to the door, rest that <laughs> slap up some metal and <laughs> yeah, yeah. some uh, vegetative roofing and you'll see what I'm talking about if you don't already know. Uh, we've got some lovely pictures. So, so these three ordinance we or these three we just passed. Was two hundred watts. They could put up houses with aluminum siding. Well, they could build one out of. Could. They could build one out of cargo container. Cargo container. And they, you could. We could have got nothing to stop them. Or they can put vinyl siding on the whole right. house. Aluminum siding. It throws out our UDO. Throws out our, UDL, throws out our design criteria. Everything. I will say, staff's expectation. Most of the home builders, if they're building an existing development. They're not going. They're going to. Right. They're yeah. going to keep doing the same. I see a lot of the. And, and we'll discuss the issues and what questions are still remaining in this present and, and how you, what the town can do to mitigate the negative effects of the bills. Um, but, yeah, I'll, well, I'll just say that. What, one, one more question. Then yes, I'll sir. Be quiet. No problem. Uh, where, what area or what rep did this originate from? Um, a representative in South Lake, and I apologize, I don't recall his wow. name. Really? I know of all places. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but he's going to be done. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, South Lake's one of the most restrictive I know. Uh, yeah, that's what design saying. criteria in Frisco. You know what? I take that back. It might. I think what I'm recalling is the bill that's related to your personal devices. Okay. So, I think this was from somebody I called. It might <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it does. Um, there's so many bills. <coughs> we learned the substances. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all right. So, uh, oh, to, to add from the, the previous slide, um, the city cannot have local amendments. So it really takes away all discretion that you once had. Um, of course, as you imagine, it makes it more difficult to preserve the aesthetic standards that y'all have set for the community. Um, in some sense, there's a saving grace that there are special historical, cultural, or, or architectural buildings that have those significances that are protected. Um, that you can still have those design standards and building standards and all the, the things in place. So historical districts, if you have any overlay zoning districts, business districts, 
uh, PD, Main Street, um, but you can't create new or expand existing cultural, historical, cultural, or architectural zones without the property consents, the property owner's consent. Um, also, any buildings eligible for wind or hail insurance coverage, not really sure where that carve out came from, um, but it doesn't apply to those, or any ordinances or regulations regarding light pollution. Well, where the, where the wind, that. sun, and hail insurance came from is there's, there's products that are hail resistant and so forth, and, and if the uh, if somebody came in and made a change in that roof, they would lose that coverage oh, under their insurance. So I can understand why that's in there. Gotcha. Well, thank you for that. Uh, the enforcement, which is what is additionally another strange thing about this bill, is that either the attorney general or the, an aggrieved party can be the one to bring suit against the town. Uh, we have a grieved party in quotation marks because it doesn't just mean the property owner. It could be a developer or uh, a neighbor could try to say they're an aggrieved party because who knows what some people want. Because somebody built a tiny home next to mine. Yes. <laughs> um, and in this uh, type of lawsuits, the Whoever wins is able to seek attorney's fees. It's pretty rare, rare against a governmental entity, but this is one of the uh, statutes that allows for that litigation. So these are our allowable uh, residential wall coverings and commercial on the side. Um, so aluminum, I'm just gonna point out a few. Wood, uh, brick, con concrete. So you could just have a flat concrete wall rather than a faux concrete wall that looks like stone and it's just a mold. Uh, fiber cement siding. I don't know if any. I don't know what that is. So except yeah. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Pretty much the same for commercial. Foam plastic insulation. I saw that on this on here, and I was like, "What is foam plastic insulation?" <laughs> this commercial side. Okay. Well, the, that goes along with that EFIS finishing system, which is the fake stucco. Ah. It's it's basically used for like uh, the big um, crown molding and so forth you see around the top of the buildings. Gotcha. Um, roof coverings, wood shingles, uh, which is. Uh, also, the sh wood shaker tiles, uh, of course, clay, metal, metal shingles, and also metal panels. What is a built-up roof? That's a, a uh, it's basically a tar roof with uh, just asphalt sheets on it. Uh, it's used mostly in a commercial building, but sometimes you, you have to have it in a residential building where there's a flat roof. Yeah, so now you, I guess you can have it in your neighborhood. You could always you have it. I mean, I don't know of anything that says you couldn't. Yeah. Because oh. you can't uh, see them normally because they are only built up roofs normally only put on a flat roof. It's not on a peak roof. Oh, okay. Well, um, I think that what this is saying is if you already have, I know what it's saying. It is saying that if you have a regulation preventing someone from having a built-up roof in a residential neighborhood, it's now void. Can't enforce that anymore. Um, and building materials and land use is not my specialty. Mine's employment law and the Public Information Act, so <laughs> that's why I don't know what some of these are. So here we have we have cat. Yeah, right, yes. exactly. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so um, this is my favorite one, and I say that sarcastically. You can have vegetative roofs, roof gardens, and landscape roofs, <coughs> but uh, for whatever reason, that's only allowed in commercial areas, so don't worry, it won't be happening any purpose anytime soon. Um, so we've got metal siding and metal roof on the left side, bricks exterior with shingle roof, 
Um, obviously, the two create a very different look um, and could cause issues when you've got a neighborhood with brick exterior shingle roofing and then you've got somebody who wants to put up metal siding and a metal roof. Um, it really changes the aesthetics. I'm I'm uh, <coughs> metal siding has been used in Dallas, right? I'm sorry? Yeah, metal, metal siding has been used, but uh, in Sunnyvale, it's not allowed. Well, up until September 1st. After September 1st, I, I, can, I can build my garage extension with the metal sides. Yes, so your neighbor, if they have to replace their siding, um, could elect for metal siding for their home. Instead of having to replace Where this is really going to affect Sunnyvale is uh, all the work we did on accessory use buildings. Because now anybody can go in and put a metal building in their yard. Unless it's changed. It can't be changed. Is this about fences also? Uh, fences? I did some research on that. I don't think it's really going to apply to fences because it's not a building. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Yes. It's only um, building materials, not any kind of accessory like that. But it does include accessory buildings. So yeah. yeah. All right. That was Storage signing. containers. I'm just gonna I've got a project I'm designing right now. Um, so this is interesting. One of the new trends is <coughs> metal buildings for multifamily uh, units. So that's an example of one. I think this one is just construction of this one. No, that's uh, what they've done is they use the metal storage containers, the shipping containers, <laughs> and that's what they've made the porches with all the way up. Uh, that's uh, the okay, corrugated so metal. Well, no, that's it. That's the final oh. product right there. Oh. <laughs> it just cuts windows. can't build that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can, I can show you a whole shopping center in Las Vegas made nothing but storage containers. Well, they're great <laughs> in their designated places, not <coughs> next. A lot of people building houses with them. And that's strong. Oh, yeah, they're structurally sound. Mm -hmm. Just and you cut a window in it anywhere you want. In fact, they even out in Vegas, they even used uh, the ones stood on end for the elevator shafts to go up three stories. And metal commercial buildings. So this is just, I'm sure a lot of you already know that the maintenance that's required for wood siding. Uh, so a lot of cities or towns have outlawed wood siding because of this issue. Uh, I had a wood house, a wood sided house, and the paint lasted for maybe like five years. I mean, our weather is just so important, so that happens pretty fast. Also, issues with vinyl siding. And there's <laughs> this is what I'm going to do at my house. <laughs> All right, so these are some options that the city can consider uh, to deal with this bill. Give me a second. So you can increase. Uh, architectural and setback standards uh, like landscaping, buffer requirements, monotony rule, overhangs, things like that to try to exclude certain types of buildings. So if you have a roof pitch requirement, for example, uh, you know, that, I suppose somebody could put a roof on a shipping container, but that still takes out. Makes it more challenging. Yeah, yes. More, yeah, you can increase the number of building materials required, like two types, uh, like so stone and maybe a small percentage metal, whatever, or I guess wood would look better. Yeah, but uh, by, by this law, from what I understand, we cannot demand that it's 80% masonry or part of the, the wall can be this or part of the wall can be that. We don't have that right. No. But you can tell them you have to have two. Yeah, we have two. Sure. Yeah. 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 Then why can this go bad metal, bad wood, bad brick? Yeah. You could. I don't think that adding number of, does that really help? It to might. Add more? 
Well, you can't just put, break up a bad looking that, building. I think it's to make it, and it's to make it more challenging, I think. Yeah, Anything right. that makes it where they can't just no, I, I slap I up a idea of metal building. To someone but too. we, we kind of have that in some of our, our design criteria, anyhow, as far as yeah. undulations and setbacks and, and on the facades of buildings. But it doesn't apply to residential. Well, I'd like to hear more about three. I guess three is really the. But if you're if you're in an HOA, I guess what you're saying there is those standards still apply. Thank oh, okay. So, still so we just want more HOAs. Then. Well, according <laughs> to what I read, deed restrictions HOA standards do not apply. That's what everybody's really complaining about. So um, you're saying that HOA standards and deed restrictions through Chapter 380 agree. So not not deed res uh, certain deed restrictions through an HOA or a Chapter 380 agreement. Um, HOAs are entities that are different than cities, towns. Correct. So those st those HOA standards are still in place, but the city cannot have their own standards. That okay, but the deed restrictions, I, I was specifically reading when I was studying up on this several weeks ago, uh, that said you cannot set a deed restriction to create this Anything you, goes against these two codes. The government can't? Yeah. No. The government can't, but no, the I mean, HOA is not the If I want to sell a piece of land, now I'm talking about the deed restriction, not, not HOA now, just deed restriction. Say I got a piece of land and I, and I want to sell it. I can put any kind of deed restriction I want to on it yeah. that says you can only build so much building on it, you can only build this type of building and so forth. But according to what I'm reading, we cannot restrict, if I did that, could not restrict the building materials used through a deed restriction. I don't know how they would do that to people when this is for isn't this affecting governments and so the property owner so we have a just one attorney basically a delegation from all the large municipal law firms in the state went and met with TML reps and this was gathered as the official position um, so but oftentimes when new bills are passed you will see things that conflict because somebody else might be of a different legal opinion right um, makes sense so it is our position <coughs> that uh, some kind of deed restriction through a 380 agreement is still allowed I could um, understand I could understand that through a, through an HOA so I'm sorry for the, the dumb non lawyers in the room so if I live in an HOA that has a HOA agreement, which a lot of Sunnyvale seems to do, they can't. They can restrict all this stuff again, or going yes. forward. Yes. Yes. And neither Sunnyvale nor the state of Texas can do anything about that. So this really only applies to non-deed restricted commercial and or residential. Residential, right? So as long as Stony Correct. Creek HOA doesn't allow shipping containers. We don't have anything to worry about Stony Creek. Well, I guess, so is, does your law firm then going forward recommend cities to do mail more through way agreements with, or I'm not sure, sure what a 380 agreement is, but it sounds like an HOA. Do they recommend doing that? So a 380 agreement is an agreement with a developer or it can be a number of different things, just three, 380 But I guess, I guess let me just boil down to, can a neighbor and two other neighbors create an HOA agreement? No. So 380 agreements are between the town and another entity like a developer or... But a private citizen can't... private can citizens, be. no. Okay, because so a, three, a 380 agreement has to have the governmental entity as one of the parties. Okay. So that would work where a deed restriction would come in where you'd say, I would put this in the deed restriction mm -hmm. as a personal... Okay, gotcha. Thank yes. you. Um, and as far as we've only analyzed this from the perspective of the town and the governmental entity, sure. there are many deed restrictions that a private property owner sure. can place on their property. Now, an attorney would have to advise them on that because some are allowed and some aren't, and it's very uh, technical to the situation. Um, right, but I imagine that's not, I mean, just kind of putting some common sense to it. Most people aren't going to let it put a deed restriction because it make, make them harder to sell the property. So why would they do that if they already have an existing house? I mean, I, I could kind of see that not being the answer for really many people. Right. Unless you believe so strongly that you don't want... Right. Well, and 
if, if I'm if I own a house, I'm really more concerned about my neighbors, right. not my own property, because I know I'm not going to. Correct. Know. So unless you've got the whole neighborhood filing deed restrictions, right? As private property owners, so it's probably not going to get you anywhere. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Sure. But for instance, if I own 25 acres out here and I was going to go sell it. I could put a deed restriction on it said I, maximum 10 houses on it. Yeah. And, but I could, according to this now, I could also say, and it's got to be brick, and it's got to be... Right. It's typically estates that do that. Yeah. And I said that transfers to right. the property. Well, I'm dealing with a property downtown right now that, that has deed but restrictions. But not to be single centric, but I really don't know how this law would apply. I mean, most of our new development now is happening in HOA... Right. Now, if it doesn't speak to exterior materials, there could be an opportunity yeah. for a little to right. vary from our standards. This, the house bills are just, they're saying do development agreements, do HOAs. The house bill, and this is what was explained to me, only applies to, only applies to municipal ordinances. So any PDEs, anything like that, those development standards, we try to add those development standards to those PDEs. <coughs> They need to be done separately in a development agreement. But there are already, all those PDs already already will have HOAs with them, right, attached? <coughs> Not right. necessarily. Well, some we typically require HOAs whenever there's a open space or something that's going to be required to be maintained. Now, what standards they put in those HOAs, the town hasn't been able to enforce that, and we don't want to enforce those regulations sure. that are above and beyond what we would require. Would require. But this may be an opportunity for us to work with the potential HOA mm -hmm. to add some specifics. Or, or, or the developers who create the HOAs, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And, so imagine, done to and encourage that. Mm -hmm. The developers don't want this. I mean, I, I saw some developers wanted to pass this bill, but I mean. It depends. I, like I said, I think some of these existing developments don't agree. I don't see this really affecting them. Even Stone Canyon. Yeah, I don't either. I don't see it affecting them. It's Good. the new developments, new phases, and then you got your single lots. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is just going to cause a uh, absolute panic in the city, of the town of Sunnyvale. For instance, the little little medical bill in the corner of Collins and was it Clay Road? Right. It was passed. It all it met all of our requirements, but then we got hundreds of letters complaining about the color of the split face block on it. And somebody comes in and decides to build a little something, and they want to use metal on it. It's we're going to get overrun. There's nothing we can do about it. Well, that's what, to her point, some of the things that we can do is require two types of building materials on the side. To uh, be an to still require the articulation. Yeah, which well, that building had it too, but everybody complained about the color of it. It can still look simple. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, there's always ways around for me. Yeah, and I mean, as y'all have probably already run into, citizens also, they don't understand the limitations of the town right. um, if they wanted to pay the building cost. There's not, I mean, you might have a chance against that. I wouldn't know off the top of my head. But as an example, somebody could do that if they put a commercial building. Right. I mean, I, I, in, in Frisco, several years ago, I tried to develop a 55,000 square foot medical office building. It took a year. And that, their criteria was so tight that you had to, any color used on the building had to be between this color on the Pantone chart and this color on the Pantone chart, which meant a Texaco couldn't go in because their logo is <laughs> red and black. So, I mean, that's how restrictive it was. Now, I'm, I think some of that might be, you know, addressed here, but that's too restrictive. And when you got... And I've always cautioned everybody on PNZ and council, you cannot dictate what somebody uses. You can dictate, you can't dictate the color. You can dictate that you need this much of this and this much of that, but you can't tell them they can't use brown block instead of cream color block. But you also would hope that capitalism would dictate is that if you don't want the color, you wouldn't go to the house building and actually they'd have to put it down and you pay the color. Well, there was a house in our neighborhood that was uh, uh, in phase two that was stuccoed and uh, everybody in the neighborhood disliked it so much that the HOA ended up having to repaint it. Uh, and, well, I, and, I, and I have yeah, I think that's the house behind me with, green, with green roof. I think they, that's the lean of the house. Right. <laughs> yeah. Before they sell it, they have to put back. 
<coughs> so uh, fourth and fifth uh, ways to deal with this, utilize development agreements in the ETJ to include building material standards. Um, it's okay if the town and an entity developer or even just a property owner come to a separate agreement to stick with certain building standards. Can you just um, can you uh, tell everybody what ET, ETJ stands for? ETJ. Sure. Extraterritorial jurisdiction. Okay. So the city limits of the wall. Y'all just have a small ETJ? It's, in, it's all floodplain. Or it's the north part and then a little bit on the east. So it sounds so like it won't help you. No, no. <laughs> I didn't think that was going to apply. <laughs> Uh, and then also just a whole bunch of training uh, on these standards, just to get everyone in the know, um, especially considering this shot clock bill. So we're moving on to the next uh, new bill. This only pertains to land development applications, class and related plans. It doesn't include zoning plans. Um, what this does is it changes the procedure for these types of documents and approvals, and it vastly shortens it, so that's why it's been a thing, the shot clock bill. Um, the city must take action within 30 days or the application is automatically approved, even if it's out of compliance with st city standards. Good luck, Dallas. No, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> it takes six months to get anything through down there. The mayor, the mayor, I think, supported this bill. Um, so you you will have three potential decisions for these types of applications: um, either approve, deny, or approve with conditions. If you were approve it with a condition, uh, there must be a written statement that clearly articulates each condition for the approval or each reason for disapproval. Uh, so you could say, we disapprove this unless you change it to X. Um, you ha and each condition or reason, so whatever you want them to change, you have to have a, a valid reason for it. It must directly relate to a requirement under the subdivision rules and must include a citation to the statute or ordinance that is the basis for that approval. Um, the, the applicant has to submit, if they submit a response, it has to be in writing, but there's no deadline to respond. Uh, but the important part for you, you all to know is once the individual responds in writing, the city has 15 days to address the response on an agenda or the application is automatically approved. Uh, the, the town cannot require the applicant to agree to a different time frame uh, waiving these requirements. However, the applicant can choose an alternative procedure only if that procedure allows for a shorter approval period. Um, and on this alternative procedure, one of the questions still remaining in this bill that will be answered only through time is whether staff approval counts as an uh, alternative procedure. Um, and we'll get to that on ways the city can establish those shortened procedure by possibly uh, just having staff approval, things like that, uh, to in order to meet this bill. Um, so the standard of judicial review uh, if the disapproval is challenged in a court of law, uh, is very high. It's clear and convincing evidence, uh, which means you don't have to have a situation where something might occur. You have to have uh, something that ties it directly. The, the, I guess the point I'm trying to make is you have to have a really, really good reason and to be able to clearly articulate why you disapproved something. Um, so what that means for you all in, in town staff is that the, the thoughts and the reasoning behind that will just need to be documented. Um, 
where as opposed to before, it probably might have just been discussed in a meeting, um, but it, it should be documented in writing just in the event. Go ahead. Well, no, you go ahead and finish, but I was just going to say is it was explained to me that it might be a recommendation that saying this is the way we should go, still figuring things out, that a lot of these conditional approvals and conditional denials come back next month with these corrections. If there is an issue, it makes sense to just deny or approve if there's not an issue, rather than put conditions on it. Because of the 15-day issue that we have with the bill, as well as um, staff is going to have to separate these applications. At one point, we had the preliminary plat approval, and then you have the civil plans that are required with the final plat. And that's when we have those conditions. They haven't met these conditions to approve the final plan. We would approve them with conditions. It's, it's recommended not to do that anymore. If they haven't met those stipulations, then it makes yeah. sense. Deny it. Deny it. But in, in order to avoid that, we're looking at removing the final plan, the civil plans as a requirement from the final plan and making it a, a requirement all its own prior to even submitting for the final plan. That way we don't have to worry about those conditions. We didn't talk about that for a long time. We're right? making it all one, one process. Well, we did that with, with the UDO in the sense that instead of having construction start after preliminary plat, we have it starting now after final plat. Because many times we would have the preliminary plat submitted, they would go out there and construct. And then our town engineer and public works director would go out there and review the site and still pending items. But with the UDO, we transition to plenty of flat, final flat. Now you can start. And then we, as a staff, will verify what's being done before we accept those public approvals. Sometimes we, we make a decision based upon whether the neighbors, people in the neighborhood, approve that or not. Is that how will that meet the? The judicial review, if if it's uh, you know disapproved, for example, because enough people got in here and made a made a made, noise. made a case, uh, you know, not a, a case that it wouldn't be good for the neighborhood or their particular area. Although all the other standards were met, well, if all the other standards are met, well, yeah, legally we legal. should pass it. Well, but I've I've yeah, seen sir. a couple of <coughs> oh, go too. that way. Yeah, and I have but too. now, I mean, now yeah. And I've always told everybody, you're up for putting yourself into a lawsuit yeah. if you do that. we got to go by the law, not by what you, your feelings are. Right. If it's a, a plat or related plan, construction plan. So ho hopefully this won't completely affect citizen input, neighbor input. Uh, and, and really, when you're approving a plan or a plat, there is only so much you all can do, if it, like you said, if it meets the standards. I mean, we just did one on the other night in another city where the property, I mean, they're threatening to see the city and things like that, but, you know, we, they had to approve it. Um, they didn't have really any basis for denying it, so. Rashad, how does this affect uh, releasing the, subdiv say, a subdivision? Until everything is completed, because used to we would that would be part of our conditions, would it not? When we were having, am I wording that correctly? Well, prior to the UDO, right, that was a problem, a major problem. That was a problem that we always had these pending items, and the developer wants to start building as soon as possible. And say, why well, I have to wait to submit my final plan to finish these items? I'll have them done before I submit my final plan. We would still have those punchless items. So to avoid all that issue, now we have plenty of plants metal, final plants metal, and they can start construction. So this will alleviate, I mean, the UDO process now will alleviate that issue, but um, we still were having, we we're still having some punch list items in a sense with the civil plans that were tied to the final plan. Say there's some minor comments that we will know as uh, final plans can approve. It's contingent to addressing all town engineer comments, which 
it may just be some notes that need to be corrected. We won't do that anymore. Until now you have to just deny it. Yeah, but we at this point, I'm, I'm looking at just having the civil plans, the construction plans approved prior to even allowing final plans. Because I know we've had a lot of final plats come through where we've had conditions attached to them and yes. we would approve them based on, oh, that's going to get done type of thing. Right. And that can't be done anymore. It but we also have somebody to throw the blame on, too. It's out of our hands, folks. It's state law. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> So here are more options, or the options to deal with this particular bill. Um, the what? So you could change your procedures to an application go going straight to PNZ and Council uh, for decision uh, with minimal comments, or increase the meetings, the number of meetings with PNZ and Council. Uh, the discussion and legal conclusion has been if this also, this bill also makes it virtually impossible to table the item to the next meeting um, because let's say if uh, an application was submitted and it comes before PNC, you likely will not have time to table the discussion for another meeting and then pass it on to council um, unless all of y'all want to schedule special meetings, uh, which we still will have to post 72 hours in advance. I, I, I asked a question. Um, mm -hmm. Never mind. I forgot what I was going to ask Rashad. Had to do with this very same thing. Uh, don't we already have a time frame in place, it's, but it's just so many days before, you know, 14 days before our PNC meeting? Notice we no, as far as them submitting, developers submitting documents. Um, we don't have a specific date. Um, staff has established a specific date for submitting so we can have time to review and meet the notice requirements for the state. Right. So that date can move, but we actually moved it a little bit in advance of the meeting. So according to this, it sounds like now we're going to have to have like two of those a month. Submittal depending dates. On, depending on the, the level of completeness of the application. So now we're, we're thinking about even having this DRCs to the point where we're reviewing, reviewing, reviewing until we deem that it's acceptable to allow the applicant to submit. That way we don't even have to deal with all these uh, yes. sticky wickets. Right, and that's the second option. Uh, it's called like pre-application. Yes. It's called pre-application. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So they can. Uh, our recommendation is that to have the applicant request that type of meeting before filing or at the, in writing, so that you have that document. And so, if there's any questions about whether the town meets the statute, you've got it in writing that the applicant. Once a pre that they have not submitted it, uh, their application and what they'd like to meet for uh, a pre submittal conference. Uh, you can also delegate more decision making to staff, uh, maybe in particular areas where you all feel comfortable as a routine application and Shad's department can approve or deny. Um, well, we discussed that with the UDO about giving staff the ability to do the final plat, did we not? Well, this, no, actually, it, it changed to where the final plats are approved by PNZ. We don't have to go don't, to don't go to council. <laughs> but we discussed having you guys. We do amended plats. Amended plats is all we changed. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, you all, I'm not sure if y'all already meet twice monthly, but if you do, you can switch to that. That's what I thought was only meet once a month. Um, so in the event that more meetings become necessary, one of the ways you all can deal with scheduling that is to appoint alternate members uh, to PNC that can attend if there's scheduling conflict to make sure that you will always have a quorum 
uh, you have to have a quorum in order to hold uh, a valid meeting. So this would allow for any short notice scheduling, things like that, uh, to make sure the meeting can happen. You could also allow submittals once per week, hire more staff, uh, which we always know is, a, is difficult. You could increase development fees and engineering costs to address the increased financial burden. Um, and definitely train city staff repeatedly on the new timelines, which I'm sure you're already on top of that. Um, so you've got that covered. So these uh, issues are still outstanding, or we don't have enough of a legal opinion to really say you're safe doing it one way versus another. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes with these bills, you have to wait and see what happens in order to, uh, to know for sure. So. The question is, does the applicant get more than one resubmittal um, to respond to a reply by the city disapproving the pass flat, which would perpetually extend the process. So they don't have a deadline to respond, just have to respond in writing. Uh, or do you, does the applicant only get one resubmittal before the city approves, disapproves, excuse me, uh, which would then trigger the uh, need for a new application. Sure. And one of the remaining questions under the act is can staff approval be an alternate approval? Um, our position is that it can in most cases, but it needs to be discussed specific to y'all's town. It, it, that's really more of an internal discussion, I think, but that is a possibility. Um, so this is an, another new bill, the ability to appeal to the Zoning Board of Adjustment, or just the Board of Adjustment, y'all just called the Board of Adjustment. No, we changed, we changed it to the Zoning Board of Adjustment with the UDO, did we not? Yeah, I think we did. <laughs> think we did. It just doesn't roll as well as the POA. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it doesn't. <laughs> um, yeah, ZBA does sounds kind of strange. <laughs> the zoning board of adjustment. Yeah, and um, any any person may appeal a BOA decision made by an official administrative official. So not just the board, but also staff um, making a decision on a particular project or application. So it could be the person who filed the application, um, the owner or representative of the subject property, or property owner within 200 feet of the subject property, um, or any one in the municipality. So perhaps that might be our saving grace, but I imagine there could be political issues behind that if the city wants to do that. The appeal must be filed no later than 20 days after the decision is made, and the BOA shall decide not later than 60 days after the appeal is filed. So uh, does your BOA have a standing meeting, or is it just as needed? No, it's every month, um, but we don't receive applications every month, so we don't receive it after the, the middle day. Gotcha. That's good you have it on a scheduled basis rather than as needed. <laughs> Uh, so the likely effect will increase litigation of the BOA decisions uh, by surrounding property owners. So previously, they didn't have standing to uh, bring that lawsuit. So before, they did not have the legal means at all to be able to even file the lawsuit. Now they do. Sorry, so you're saying that close bill pass? You didn't agree with the BOA. You could just <laughs> you're stuck. It's the ones, the property owners that are within right. 200 feet. Right, so if you're a neighbor of a property and you had no, no repeal at all? Right, have... right. Unless uh, the city had something in their ordinance that gave that right, there was not a statutory right to I, it. I believe we, that you could take it to the council. 
if I'm not mistaken, if the BOA disapproved or didn't uh, pass it. Well, I'm just thinking about these small cities with just a neighbor that's just tired of the BOA. They had no recourse. <laughs> I mean, they can attend the public hearing and note their concerns. And I think there is a 20% rule. 20% yeah. of those in that 200 foot notification area. That's the three fourths of uh, the It requires a three fourths vote. So they had their way of saying they're opposed. Oh, okay. There's some other way. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think they can appeal to council. No, it goes to the district court. Too. Oh, okay. It's, they're really quasi judicial. Okay. Um, this is another new bill, the annexation bill. It ends most unilateral annexations by any type of municipality, uh, regardless of the location, population, or provision of water and sewer. So before you used to be able to do it, in some cases, without the property owner's permission. Um, that's not allowed anymore. Uh, most annexations allowed now, and, and this is the bill that passed and was effective in May. Um, so this, yeah, so this has been in place for a couple of months. This one I agree with. Wow. <laughs> so now you can only annex uh, if there's a, re a request by the owner of the land. The effect is that it curtails significantly municipal growth. So you're basically freezing the city limit lines in their place as of May. Uh, unless it unless they want something wants so. right. right. That really doesn't affect us because we're pretty much <laughs> frozen. Frozen now. I mean we can't go north, south, yeah, east, or west. Small ETJ, yeah. so. So, uh, some franchise fees are eliminated. Do y'all deal with this? No, we don't. No. Uh, so, this is going to be interesting. Uh, the right to speak on agenda items. So, many of you are probably used to uh, that public comments are allowed at public meetings. There was actually no statutory right to that previously. Um, just most municipalities allow it. Um, now there's a statutory right to company choice, but to allow it. Uh, and so if you don't have already, and Rashad, stop me if y'all do, put, to keep control of your meetings, it's wise to put in place time limits, two to three minutes. That's yeah. a general policy. I know council has little cars and stipulations. To sign up, yeah. But, uh, generally, we don't have a red light, green light. Right. Yeah. No. But Chairman Dipko. Ken just yells at us to talk to him. So you could consider having those just available um, for PNZ meetings if somebody wishes to speak. And so how that would affect the meeting is you'd have uh, posted on your agendas whether you want to have comment at the beginning of the meeting or allow each individual to speak on that particular item. So it's either or, but they have a right to do whichever one. Rashad, how does that affect our discussion items like the first five or four we had tonight? Because we're not required to open a, a public hearing on that. No, but I mean, you could just pause and allow. Well, like we, we did. Do that anyway. We do yeah. that anyway. Yeah, we, we, I don't think this will really affect us that much. Okay. Typically, we allow the public to speak anyway. Yeah, we always have. Well, we could use this as our benefit and have people say we can only come ahead of time. It would be a little confusing having them speak beforehand, before the item. Yeah, I think I think it's better the way we do it is yeah. speak no, on each other. Well, and it, hopefully this. I highly doubt we get to this point, but by way of example, there's some cities that have people that show up to public meetings that just want to have their three minutes to talk about whatever they want because it's not yeah. limited to what's on the agenda. So, like I actually heard just this morning in LA, they've sh public comments have disrupted the meeting so much they will they've had to shut them down. People show up in costumes and. Oh my so, 
like I said, that's not going to happen here, but uh, that is what it could get to. So, so really, this wouldn't have, wouldn't affect an open uh, open mic time. You know, like you say, a lot of like Dallas has got it open, and they can get up and talk about anything and gripe and whatever, mm -hmm. and then they have three minutes. And they allow maybe. 15 minutes total, and after that they shut it down, and then they open it back up at the end of the session. And by then, a lot of the people that wanted to speak, they're, they're gone. Right. So, so, I mean, does it affect that? I don't know. No. Okay. Um, it, all it does is provide the right to speak by statute that wasn't available before. So Dallas, if they wanted to, could have completely done away with the public comment. And period. just stick to the agenda items. <coughs> or not allow any comment at all. Yeah, okay. But that's such an uncommon practice for many municipalities. Most practice with that public comment period. That's why we're all so used to it. Um, our, our town council currently, at the beginning of every meeting, allows for the general comments to be made. So there's a platform for that. Yeah, and really. Uh, So really what this bill, the question is, is can you, uh, it's more to, to get policies in place, it sounds like I'll already have them, uh, but also to t think through them more um, and specify if it's not already three minutes to speak per item or three minutes total, or like you said, hmm. Dallas has 15 minutes total, uh, I guess that's just on the general, but I'm talking about each individual person. Right. Well, we've kind of always played that by ear. I mean, there's some meetings like tonight where we've got 15 people in attendance and some meeting where we got 200 and all 200 want to say the same thing. So I think uh, between PNZ and council, we've, uh, we've often just brought up the point that if you're going to, if you, what you got to say was the same thing as what so-and-so said, then, you know, because of time limits, and then we ask them to limit their time to three minutes. Never really held anybody to it, but generally. So the problem that can you can run into is that if you allow one person to speak yeah. for as long as they want, and then you get people talking for a really long period right. of time, and then you try to put in your three-minute limit. Uh, we try to do it before we start the yeah, discussion. Yeah, that's, that's definitely but how saying, You're saying we should codify this at a time and make sure it's written out in our or ordinances, I guess. Yes, or just or just have it up as a policy. Yeah, y'all have, yeah, have that. Is that what policy is, is it? Yeah, we just... We need to start enforcing that, baby. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Chairman and shot clock. They're good. Shot clock. Chairman. We have our own shot clock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, just for one more month, guys. Talk to our club. Yeah, it's very rude. You can start playing elevator music. Yeah. Most, pe most people, most people will buy it. By. We've had one or two that tried to abuse it, but so far we've been okay. All right. So the next uh, bill, this refers to the public, or excuse me, uh, the Public Information Act and the Open Meeting Act. So boiled down, basically, if you conduct city business from your personal device. This applies to every employee, city official, even city attorneys. If you're conducting business on your personal device, that information is deemed public. Uh, and the city, or the town, will, uh, in response to the Public Information Act, has to not produce it, but it has to be included in the, the, doc, the arena of documents that uh, the city has. So let's say if you have an application and so one of y'all is texting with Rashad or whomever in the city about it, uh, then your text messages, if somebody asks for any and all documents concerning such and such application, your personal text messages uh, with the city are deemed public. Now we can ask the AG if we have permission to withhold it. Have y'all received any Public Information Act training? Yes, we have, and that, that was brought up in the in the yeah. training, and okay. so we're, we're familiar with it. But sometimes it's 
uh, presented in legalese and it's not logical. <laughs> so I'm happy to explain that procedure if y'all would like. Um, now, that doesn't extend to text messages with your children, your spouses, your friends, um, but as you can imagine, we, so let's say if you refuse to provide those text messages, uh, it is prior to this, this new bill, uh, the cities, they had a duty to request your text messages. And once they did that, uh, the city satisfied their duty. This leaves an open question of what, who, what can an individual, because a requester, somebody who's asking for that information, can file complaints with the Attorney General's office and even uh, take an action in district court in order to get the information they're looking for. Uh, so the fourth, there's no Fourth Amendment constitutional right. Uh, the Fourth Amendment is the protection against unreasonable search and seizures. So uh, as city employees, the city has no ability to ask for Rashad's cell phone and require him to produce it as a condition of his job. Uh, that's what this statute says. Now there is centuries of, not centuries, hundreds of years of case law on uh, the, the very opposite of that, where the governmental entity still does not have the right to ask for that information or require that information. There was a recent Supreme Court case that says you don't lose your individual rights uh, because you work or represent a governmental entity. It's still protected. Um, so the purpose of letting you all know this is just that if you get a request from somebody in the town for your text messages or your emails, that is why they were asking. Um, some attorneys have gone so far as to say don't conduct any city business on your personal device. That's a very conservative approach and in my opinion not practical. I text with uh, city employees, city officials all the time. That's, that's how we communicate now. It's fast and easy obviously. Um, so just under it, general be careful of what you put in text messages and emails and just be mindful that even if it's coming from your Gmail uh, account, if it's about city business, then that's considered public information. Uh, so what we would ask is, you know, just forward those documents if you received a request. Most likely, I don't, I have not dealt with many public information requests for PNZ members, personal information. I get them all the time for city council. So when you, say, when you say personal information, you mean with regard to a topic of the city business, right? Right. right. Yeah, well, I say personal information because most people consider what's on their cell phone to be theirs or their Gmail account to be theirs. This is saying it's, it's, it's not like if it It's like when we business. email each other back and forth about something, and they have the right to, to know sure. what we talk about. But the mayor texting is niece is not an issue. Correct. <laughs> no, but to reasonably, okay, so let's say we get to uh, litigation and the court says, because presumably the individual is saying, no, you can't have access to anything, I'm not giving up anything. Um, let's say that the district court requires you to produce that cell phone. Well, you're just handing it over until they can extract the information so they will have access to everything else on it. Sure, sure. So that's really where the debate, and also um, a lot of city employees or officials can be sensitive when they, they review or reserve sensitive communications like, oh, I can't believe so-and-so is for this ordinance or this whatever. Uh, 
they'll send it on their personal devices, thinking that it's protected and not subject to the Public Information Act, um, but it is. So. so you either forward or transfer the information to the governmental body um, or preserve it in its original form in a backup or archive on your device for the legal retention period. Um, your city secretary knows the retention period schedules probably by the back of her hand. Um, basically, don't destroy the information, um, which, I mean, that can happen inadvertently. I don't like to save every email that I get, uh, but we're supposed to now. But thanks to city business. Um, the consequences could include criminal charges. Um, I, <coughs> we say that because it is, there's the potential, but uh, especially with the Public Information Act, there has been, and I checked a number of years ago, so there theoretically could have been some kind of criminal charge. Uh, there's maybe a handful that have been pursued for violations of the Open Meetings Act or the Public Information Act. So it, it takes a very high threshold, but it can happen. Um, or also there can be civil injunctive relief. So let's say um, Mayor gets a request for information on his personal advice and he says, I don't want to release it. Well, the requester uh, could file an action in district court, uh, which is an ex, it can be an expedited process depending on how they uh, file it, but seeking to force the court to force the mayor to release his information. So it could come in the form of a civil lawsuit rather than a criminal issue. And that's it. Does anybody have any questions? Well, thank you for your time. In fact, there's more thank questions you. than there are answers. I know. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so much for local control, right? Well, I, there's still might be an option. Yeah, still right. still might be an option. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, I think Probably we should just declare every, really every street in Sunnyvale as a main street. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's done. I mean, there's nothing in there that says we can't. Historical town. Well, no, because you can't go back before April, and anything right. after April declared as a historical doesn't count. By the way, yeah, Dave Thielen, the, the Beaumont but representative, is a real estate developer. <laughs> Shocking. Oh, really? No joke. Yeah. I just looked that up. Yeah. He's a real estate developer. So let's just declare every street in the uh, main personal street. Personal interest there, I think. Yeah. All the way. Oh, whatever. So yeah. awful. Yeah. I bet he's going to get back well, oh, you know thank is. you for the information. You're welcome. Appreciate it. You're welcome. And of course, we can answer questions on these as they yeah. come up. So. All right. Uh, we're on to item number eight then, where we have got to pass this little piece of, of uh, information to meet the September 1st deadline. Summary, an amendment for the Unified Development Ordinance, Zoning and Subdivision Ordinance, and Building Code Ordinances to said, cause, said ordinances to be in compliance with House Bill 2439 and House Bill 2497 that takes effect on September 1st, 2019. An ordinance of the Town of Sunnyvale enacting amendments to the Town Unified Development Ordinance, Zoning Ordinance, and Building Code Regulations providing for compliance with new state laws affecting materials used in construction or renovation of residential and commercial buildings, rules and proceeding before the Zoning Board of Adjustment, providing for appeals, providing related directives to the town manager, providing a, a conflict cause, providing a savings repealing penalty and severance clause, providing for publication and setting an effective date. Director Jackson. Just getting us in compliance with those House Bill regulations for uh, 2439 and House Bill 2497. 
um, in accordance with those stipulations. Uh, this was drafted by uh, the law firm and reviewed by their staff. So we're just, we're just getting this in. This is the placeholder, basically, that she mentioned yes. until we can fine tune it. Yes. I don't see where we have a choice but okay. not to go ahead and, and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> adopt it. I yeah. mean, our hands are tied. I agree. This is where I'm not well, if you don't adopt it, the law is they don't don't play. Play. So, so in a way, it doesn't matter. Yes. But it's, it could be a sign of protest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is the law, so this needs to be adopted. But, yeah. of course, you're at liberty to do what you please. But I, I will say... Uh, I have been advised that we won't immediately jump into amending the UDO because this, in an essence, is suspending those requirements that are uh, in opposition with the law in our UDO. So okay. we'll go through and try to figure out, you know, this just gives us time to take our time with those amendments. Okay. Rather than have 20 different amendments. Yeah. Makes sense. I move to approve. <laughs> Second. Let's go open a public hearing. Actually, uh, we don't have don't a know. public hearing on this, do we? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, anybody want to speak as yeah. far as the public <laughs> is concerned? Now open the, the public hearing. No one, and we're going to close the public hearing. All right, uh, I'll accept an motion then. Move to approve. <laughs> okay, hang on, guys. He has questions. Can we use her as a, so she's the, the legal advice for this one item here? She was legal advice for both items, this one and the next one. Okay. Um, but I, these, Not, these ordinances were provided by our legal counsel staff. We didn't. Okay. Yeah. So all we're saying is that this is going to take effect. And our city is trying to manage our UDO to have us take it back. Correct. It's not saying we support the vote. It's not saying. No, no. It's, it's neutral as far as what the city approves of it. The way I read this, it's sort of saying, like, we support the bill. What page are you looking at? Oh, um, which one are you on? Uh, item number eight. Right. Which, yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's on the screen. It's on the screen. In the yeah, but, yeah, but where? Well, I go by background and analysis. If you read the last paragraph, this ordinance is considered interim in the sense that it will suspend our current regulation. That's all we're doing is suspending part of the UDL. I just want to be clear on this amendment because the way I read this, and the way I know why everyone else could read this, is that the PNZ, thus the city, supports this amendment. Hospital No, this this amendment is only to suspend that part of our UDO to make us in compliance with the state this at this point in time. Yeah. And this is just standard notice language. Oh, I, I, where's the support I'm language? I'm very clear exactly oh, yeah. this one. I'm pretty sure that I don't see any support language. Where's the support language? language? I just don't see it. I, just, I like where. where I guess what I'm saying is it takes effect on North Star Town enacting amendments to the town unified. That, that line, an ordinance to our, of our enacting amendments to the town unified UDO, I guess. Right. So we're saying, because of this bill, we're enacting a, a change to our UDO. Have to. Mm -hmm. have we have don't to. have to. Just say have to. Well, we have to. Correct me if I'm wrong. I know I'm splitting hairs. I don't mean to annoy anyone. That's fine. It's, correct me if I'm wrong, but if we don't pass it, it still takes effect. It's well, still the law. I understand that. Under, I completely understand that. So well, I'm saying it doesn't really make a difference. This is the caption for the ordinance that requires specific, so you have to state what you're doing in the ordinance, and that's the first five. Right. Uh, then it goes to uh, providing for appeals. I, just, I, I, I like the wording of providing for compliance in the new state law, that's saying we got to hold a law and we're providing compliance that I just, um, sorry, I just don't. I, I may not see what you're seeing though. So I mean, I just, I don't see where it says. You don't think this one your neighbors ask you why did you vote for this? Yeah, they, if they do, I'll say because we didn't have a choice. Yeah, it's a state law. It's a law. 
the and choice. the law supersedes. So you think if you don't put the, the law is in place? Okay, I'll be quiet. I'll be quiet. No, go ahead. No, I want to draft a declaration of independence right here. <laughs> no, it's, my point is that it's the it's the as you all know, yeah. people will tear this thing apart. Mm -hmm. Starting today, people are going to look at this and say they're not going to look at the law. They're going to get that amendment and make sure that it passes their sniff test. I'll see you guys know. You guys know this. For, I, I know the law, and, and I know the, but you know what's going to happen. This this is just standard. Every town will have something just like this. The wording in the actual ordinance is where it says what you think and why we're why we're doing it. Right. That is the actual wording where it's and I'll, I'll say oh, okay. whereas the 2019 legislature legis, legislature enacted House Bill 2497, which requires amendments to procedures applicable to rules and applicable procedures. And, was, and it goes okay. on to say that's signed by the governor. This is explaining the reasoning. So yeah, maybe I should be more. Yeah, that, that's me straight from my yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's the actual ordinance. Okay. Yeah, I'm just a fool. Uh, you know, whereas House Bill 2439 was signed by the governor on June 14, 2019, as effective date of September 1st, 2019, and then yada yada okay. yada. And then here's what the town's going to do. Well, we're going to suspend parts of our UDA UDO that would be affected by this bill. Okay. So this is the whole thing. Yes. That's the city's law. Okay. This would be what will go into our new ordinance. Okay. Well, That's the actual text. It, this is not the text of the. Yeah, this is just the header. Yeah, this is just the header. Yeah. 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 Well, I know I'll put it this, I promise you. You know what to do. You're going to get all these phone calls. We won't care on the board. I really don't think it's been said before that we're going to have a problem with our big developers. Because they're paying big time for this land and they're not going to. No, but they're, no, going to, you, they're going to keep the standards that are here. care about individual rights. I mean, yeah. it's been the platform of several people. Running, running. Well, I understand that. Yeah, and I understand I that. But have, this is our focus there in Austin who are taking say, away control. As a community it's like the fracking deal. I, 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 I fully believe that, yeah. that, the, that the individual rights have been taken away into account because I think it's important. We are a whole city here or our, 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 you know. <laughs> Not, I guess not the problem is we just don't have an option. If we don't approve this, we can't do business, right? I mean, yeah. our, our yeah. processes are frozen on this. You can still do business. What this does is provide public notice that until otherwise revised, the, the requirements that are in conflict with these laws are suspended. So it gives public notice that if you have a masonry requirement, that is no longer valid, it's suspended until further notice. So the city will not be taking action against somebody who puts up stone as opposed to something else. Metal. Yeah. Or metal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I foresee, I'm personally, I've been in this business for nearly 60 years. Um, I really foresee that something's going to happen with this. There's too many cities that this is affecting and that, that need some. I mean, the only city in the whole of the state of Texas that doesn't have a zoning ordinance is Houston. And they do most nearly everything by deed restriction, uh, which means you can go build pretty much anything you want anywhere you want as long as you got the money to do it. I really think there's got to be some kind of reversal on this or some type. And I think that's what we're doing here is we're just buying the time yes. to get that into place is yes. what I think. The group that really opposes this, or that has, I'm sure that more will be added as the, their efforts get organized, they're calling for a special session of the legislature. Mm -hmm. So their hopes are to not wait the two years mm -hmm. um, and to get a some kind of session called um, before that. Yeah, somebody didn't think this one all the way through. For sure. this, I mean, this needs a lot of publicity, which the only thing I've seen was an article in the Dallas Morning News about it. Yeah, well, I haven't seen well, much in the public. Yeah. The reason I found out about it is because I got a notice from one of my alternative material suppliers really? that yeah, it was well, that it was yeah. now the law, and that's what that's what I sent out to everybody a couple <laughs> yeah. weeks ago. about the law, okay, well, it's not obvious to the general public 
public how this could affect them. And so the, uh, some certain passage of time might need to take place before it's newsworthy. Um, but I think oftentimes there'll be newsworthy items on a legislative level, level that will get their attention when it, and it doesn't have to make the news. So hopefully we'll get to that level. Well, I guarantee when I build that uh, container house next to <laughs> Governor Abbott's house, it'll get some attention. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what it's going to take is something like that, probably. This, this really is the only thing that I've ever had in the you know, pros for HOAs. And I know. Yes, this is, now it's pro HOAs. Pro -HOA. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and it's like everybody says, I don't think anybody in, in any of the builders in Sunnyvale, they're going to maintain the same type of structures they've been doing. But... You know, I mean, it, I just don't think it's going to make a major difference. But it's going to be the one odd duck that, that's going to come in and decide he wants to build that container cargo house. container house, and that's what's going to go. Cadillacs halfway in the ground. He's <laughs> got the money. Okay. I'm okay yeah, here. Metal. It's we, metal. We right? can't stop. It. It's <laughs> on Highway 80. Puts a roof over top of it. We can't stop it. Yeah. Okay, All right, so is that the end of the discussion on this item? Ms. Mitchell. I'm move again to approve. Move and second. Second. Who was that down there? Burton. Okay, uh, Ms. Burton. I couldn't tell if it was you or Ms. Daniels. All those in favor? What? Who seconded that? Ms. Burton. Oh, we have. We have. We have. Oh, yeah. We have to be someone in our. Alternate couldn't second this, I'm sorry. Well, we had Miss Daniels a while ago. I know, so she would have to be the one. Miss Bird couldn't vote on, on the second. Whoever's filling in Mr. Sandler's spot would be voting. Okay. I guess Miss right. Daniels. <laughs> well, that would be Miss Daniels in because she has uh, the seniority. Right. So, sorry, Miss Burton. It's okay. So, we'll so still need a second. Second. <laughs> That's only Miss Daniels. <laughs> okay, now then, all in favor. Uh, reluctantly, uh, King is holding his nose. I'm holding my nose. <laughs> okay, the next item is a continuation of this. An amendment for the Unified Development Ordinance, Zoning and Subdivision Ordinance, and Building Code Ordinances to cause said ordinances to be in compliance with House Bill 3167 uh, that take effect on September 1st, 2019. An ordinance of the Town of Sunnyvale, Texas, enacting the amendments to the Town Unified Development Ordinance, Subdivision Ordinance, providing for compliance with new state legislation affecting procedures for approving plats, replats, and related site, related site plans, providing a conflict clause, providing a severance clause, and setting an effective date. Director Jackson. Commission, as we... As it was explained to us with regard to this bill, uh, this is affecting our review time timeline with regard to plumbing plans, final plans, replans, uh, site plans, civil plans. Uh, there are some things that we are doing behind the scenes to uh, come into compliance with this, but um, as well as this ordinance. But this ordinance is actually just those conditions that are uh, in opposition with the, uh, the law uh, will be suspended, as you know. And I notice here that, that in your comments that at this time we're in compliance of the of this for the most part anyhow, correct? Well, that was my initial, initial thought until we got, uh, got the presentation. Went well with the Lane's attorney. Uh, but, you know, we already have been required to do the 30-day uh, for plats. But on our applications, we have a, a line on there that says uh, the applicant can't wait at 30 days, in which typically they do because it takes longer with those stipulations and stuff. But now that we understand the ramifications of those stipulations, we're going to have to reprint some forms. Yeah, we're going to have to do some things. We can't ask for it. Right. Okay. All right. That's it. Any other questions or comments? It's in another place. Okay. And here's, here's the word. I see it. All right. Any other questions or comments on this item, agenda item? Now, entertain a motion. I make a motion to accept this amendment for the video. Okay. A second. Okay, it's been motioned by Ms. Daniel, second by Ms. Mitchell. All those in favor? 
That's again unanimous with our nose being held. All right, it is now 8.53 and we will adjourn this uh, scheduled meeting. I thought it went faster than it, than it was going to. I thought it'd be <laughs> at least nine. Yeah. 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 Very efficient. Oh, what can Really? Yeah, it could have been. I mean, we just don't know what it was. I mean, I That's what you were saying. Yeah, there's like every 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 She's in the resort area. I'm going to my friend of it. Ah, uh, she's in the resort area. 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 She's in the resort area